Welcome to our week on photography. This week we're going to focus on uh, a short history on photography, just to give you the basics. We're going to discuss different types of photography, some key artists, and then I'm going to give examples of how to look at photography using visual literacy. Before we start looking at photographs, I thought it's important that you learn a little bit about how photography began. The basic concept of projecting an image onto a wall or screen is actually an ancient one, beginning as far back as the ancient Greeks and ancient Chinese. This medieval illustration shows a room built in a field for an artist. The structure is a room built within a room. The outer structure is of a solid wood with two holes bored into the wall on either side. This structure is called a camera obscura. This is actually a double camera obscura showing you what would happen if you had holes bored on two sides of the structure. Within the larger outer structure with the small hole there is a smaller inner room made of stretch thin fabric. The idea is that the scenery from the brightly lit landscape channels through the hole and is projected onto the fabric in the darkened interior. The artist is then able to sketch the scene directly onto the fabric. This entire structure is called the camera obscura. It does not necessarily have to be a large structure that is outside. It could be rooms built inside a building or it can also be a smaller box it would have a whole board in the side that allows light to go into the small box and to actually create a photograph inside. An interesting consequence of this technique is that the projected image is actually upside down. However, it is easy for an artist to outline the image and then turn the canvas right way up so that his painting is an upside down as well. A camera is actually a smaller version of the example of the larger camera obscura that I showed a few slides before. A mirror is used to ensure that the image is viewed right side up and instead of an artist drawing the image inside, the picture is rather burned into light sensitive film or paper. This photograph by Louise Daguerre was one of the first photographic images ever taken. Although it looks like an empty street scene, it was actually a busy day with horses and carts rushing up and down the avenue. Because the metal plate upon which this image was burned took so long to process, we're talking hours here, it could not capture moving objects. However, there were two people who were still long enough, that is the shoe shiner and his customer. Because early photographs were, er, were only in black and white, or more correctly in light and dark, the visual literacy element of value was very important. Photographers strive to have a range of different values in each of their work, so they would have a nice range of lights, middle grays and darks, which creates contrast and interest in each image. We're now going to briefly look at three types of photography. The first one is we're going to look at photography as a way to capture portraits. We're also going to look at photography as documentary and photography as art. Each example I show you will be from a work from the 1800s. The first work is a portrait by Richard Beard of Maria Edgeworth. And this particular portrait is of interest because Edgeworth was a writer and she commented on her experience getting her portrait taken. Keep in mind that at the time getting your photo taken was something very novel, very new. It would have been taken in a professional photographer studio. There would have been a lot of equipment, a lot of assistants running around. Uh, the whole experience would have been extremely curious and probably exciting for the visitor. But at the same time, because photographs were exposed so slowly, the, the photographed person really got pretty bored because what you had to do is you had to sit really, really still for a long time. And as years progressed, the sitting time became less and less. But the first, very first photographs took up to eight hours to expose. Um, I'm really hoping that by the time Mariah Edgeworth got into this position, getting her uh, portrait taken, that it was down to a matter of only a few minutes. I'm going to quickly read her words about this experience. 
it is a wonderful mysterious operation you are taken from one room into another upstairs and down and you see various people whispering and hear them in neighboring passages and rooms unseen and the whole apparatus and stool on a high platform under a glass dome casting a snapdragon blue light making all look like spectres and the men in black gliding about sounds like she was in some sort of a sci-fi movie instead of just getting her portrait taken at walmart second genre of photography is that of documentary and this one is specifically about war timothy o'sullivan would go about taking images of wars going on in the states um, particularly the civil war and this image shows the aftermath of a battle in pennsylvania and it was the very first time that people back at home started to see images like this in their newspapers. Up till now they'd only had written accounts and illustrations, but now they were actually seeing real life dead bodies on the battleground and it was quite disturbing for many people, a very new experience. And our third category is art. There's no real reason to take this photograph in the sense that a sitter has paid to have their portrait taken or you're getting paid by a newspaper to document world events but rather this is a scene where a photographer has been caught by a moment in time has seen something that has ignited an aesthetic response and in this case William Henry Fox Talbot feels that there is a beauty in the simple setting of you know a darkened doorway with sh with shadows and in the light coming in a diagonal and the broomstick and he has felt that this simple scene in itself is worthy of replicating and memorializing and in his own words he says a painter's eye will often be arrested where ordinary people see nothing remarkable a casual gleam of sunshine or a shadow thrown across his path a time-withered oak or a moss-covered stone may awaken a train of thoughts and feelings and picturesque imaginings so this is photography purely as an aesthetic appealing art in your journal entry this week you're going to find a picture one that is at least of several years old that has intrigued you and for example I've chosen this one by Sam Zima who took a photograph of the Soweto uprising in um, a town called Soweto just outside Johannesburg I was very young when this happened but the uprising was by students, both high school and primary students, who were upset that the apartheid regime that was predominantly of Afrikaans speaking people, Afrikaans are a culture that speak a language that derives from Dutch, and the Afrikaans regime stated that all classes had to be given in Afrikaans and not in the native tongue of the African people and the students were very upset about this a lot of them did not know Afrikaans uh, they wanted to continue to be educated in the native tongue and so they went out into the streets to protest and keep in mind these students did not have guns they did not have weapons um, they were just out to protest and being the way that apartheid was at the time uh, the police started shooting at these unarmed students and in this particular image you see a young boy who's been shot he actually um, does die from his injuries uh, the older boy carrying him is crying and trying to rush him for help to help and the young boy's sister is actually next to him and she too is crying and there is a sense of shock and you know how could this have happened disbelief and this particular image became a an image that circulated throughout the world as a way to show the barbarism that was happening in South Africa how innocents were being killed just because they were African of African descent and it really helped to solidify the world against the apartheid regime so pictures are powerful and they can make change and this is the image that I have chosen to talk about but you're going to find your own image that intrigues you find something that either fits into the portrait documentary or art categories that we've looked at 
choose a work that has interested you over the years, not something that you've recently seen, but something that you've seen several times over a period of time, and every time you see it, it still grips your attention for some reason. In your journal, you're going to include a paragraph where you discuss why this image is significant. What is it that keeps intriguing you? And ensure that you include an image of this photograph with your entry.